And joining us now is Lynn Franco, Director of Economic Indicators and Surveys at the Conference Board. Lynn, thanks so much for joining us again. So we got the number 71.2. Translate that for me. Put that into some kind of perspective, please. Well, we've had another shock. So we had this rather large decline in consumer confidence, really concentrated in people's expectations, given the uncertainty from the shutdown and the debt crisis. Their assessment of current conditions, however, didn't take a big hit. So it appears that the economy still remains on track. But Lynn, what, what does 71.2 mean in the grand scheme of things, in terms of where we were, say, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago? How does that number measure up? Consumers are clearly not very confident. Um, and when we just take a look back over the last several months, we can see that the reasons why have been several shocks. We've had a fiscal cliff. We've had a payroll tax hike, the sequester. So it's one shock after the other. And we've never been able to sustain momentum. So we still have a weak and uncertain consumer. The government shutdown, according to your report, had a big impact, as you just mentioned. But what specifically were consumers worried about? Was it that the government won't be able to raise the debt ceiling and that the U.S. would default? What were the real specific concerns linked to the government? I think just the uncertainty that it created, both in terms of the economic environment, so we saw expectations for business conditions really take a negative hit. We saw jobs take a negative hit. The one interesting point was, however, that income expectations didn't take a big hit. So maybe there's a little hope for the holiday season. So people are still hoping that their incomes will stay the same or stronger? Well, they expect a little bit of a decline, but that didn't take as big a hit as their expectations did about the economy. So maybe there's a little bit of silver lining and a little bit of hope for, for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Why are they feeling good about their incomes, or less bad, if you will? Because I don't think the hit has really sort of been personalized as of yet. There's more apprehension about where the state of the economy is going. Consumers are still employed, at least the majority. So in, in a sense, it's more, it's not as localized. Well, employment and unemployment has been one of the big factors that have affected consumers and their confidence here to date and over the last two years. What is the sentiment about employment? Well, even though it took a hit this month, it has improved significantly from where it was a year ago or two years ago. Again, we just keep having these shocks that uh, sort of make consumers take a step back rethink and pause before we sort of resume an upward momentum. OK, so what are consumers feeling good about? Any bright spots in this report? I think the bright spot is that the present situation is holding steady, so the economy is not falling apart, maybe a little bit of a slowdown, but they're not expecting growth to suddenly cease. And in terms of their income expectations, that held up. So that's good, because the holiday season is right around the corner, so they may be willing to spend a little bit. Now, what about, you mentioned spending, but we had retail sales down 0.1%. You don't think that that's going to translate into the big holiday shopping season then? No, we don't think it's going to be a tremendous holiday season. Um, but just from other reports that we've seen, they, they intend to spend about as much as they did last year. And I think we'll see a lot of incentives and a lot of discounting to sort of drive up sales when the holidays approach. Now, what about housing? Housing has been a bright spot for consumers. And as we just mentioned, the US housing market making a strong recovery this August. Numbers up in terms of home prices, 13% from August 2012. How are consumers feeling about that? Well, we saw a little bit of cooling off here. Obviously, higher mortgage rates are having an impact. Uh, and that's going to then affect you know, spending for durables as well. So we expect housing to continue to recover, but just at a somewhat slower pace. But you do still see the recovery continuing despite the rise in mortgages? Yes, and we expect the economy to continue to improve as well. I think we'll take a, you know, a hit in fourth quarter because of the shutdown, but we're at least uh, expecting some more growth, even though it's a little bit slow and sluggish in 2014. But the con conference board's gauge of consumer expectation for the next six months was also down. That decreased um, to 71.5 from 84.7 in September. Again, what do these numbers actually mean? The expectations is a shock absorber. So when we have these types of shocks, whether it's a government shutdown, a debt crisis, a hurricane, that's usually the indicator that absorbs the shock. The rule of thumb is to wait about four months, and we usually rebound and get back on track. The fact that the present situation didn't also decline really is a signal that it's not so much an economic event, but more of a shock effect. So pending future shocks, you maintain that there should be some consistency. 
there will be some consistency. We should hover around these numbers um, and hopefully begin to get back on track. We seem to have had several periods this year where we had consumer confidence increasing and then there was a shock and a little bit of a setback. All right, we'll see how we hold up in the next month. Thank you so much, Lynn Franco, Director of Economic Indicators and Surveys at the Conference Board.